roast is the ultimate comfort food, but sometimes it can often be dry. Not anymore. We're gonna make it in a Dutch oven with a rich, robust gravy. Here's your guide to the perfect Sunday supper. So here I have a three pound bottom chuck roast. You wanna dry it really well because we're gonna sear it first. Now you just wanna season it liberally with kosher salt. I like to use diamond crystal kosher salt because I feel that it's less saltier, oddly enough, less saltier than Morton. So just keep that in mind. And freshly cracked black pepper. When I'm making a pot roast, I actually prefer to use the chuck because it's flat on the surface versus that hump from a bottom round. That way it will stay fully submerged in the liquid, keeping it well hydrated and tender. You wanna heat a six quart Dutch oven over medium heat. Two tablespoons, avocado oil, canola oil, any neutral flavor, high smoke point oil. You wanna get this nice and hot and sear this baby. So I've taken this out at room temperature for about 30 minutes to remove the chill. You want it to come to room temperature so you don't shock the meat. Let it sear for about two to three minutes until it's lightly golden. I'm gonna flip it over and sear the other side. I'm gonna remove it and prep our aromatics. I want one small bulb of fennel. So what we're doing here is we're actually gonna create a broth that will really make an incredibly flavorful gravy at the end. We only need about half of this fennel. We'll just slice it into big pieces like that. One medium onion. Again, we're just gonna chop it up. Nothing perfect, because we're gonna actually puree this at the end. Two cloves of garlic. Nip the root like that. That way when you whack it, it just, easily removes the skin, so you're not fiddling with it. See, like that. Just give it a rough chop, and we're ready. That's it, quick, easy, simple. See these little brown bits at the bottom of the pot? That's called the fond. The French referred to that as the fond, and that's gonna create great flavor when we're making our beef broth. In goes the onions, the fennel, a little bit of kosher salt, freshly cracked black pepper. Now you just wanna saute this until it gets tender crisp, a couple minutes. If you feel like your pot is a little dry, just give it a little spritz. Add the garlic. Saute this until it becomes fragrant, about a minute. Three cups of water, even water deglazes. So we're actually gonna create a beef broth on our own. Turn the beef, that's what I want you to do. I want you to make sure it's submerged by 90%, so that way that roast stays tender, moist, and succulent. Three tablespoons of Worcestershire. So that's just gonna boost the flavor, no need to season it with salt and pepper. One little bunch of thyme right in there. Submerge them under the water. Heated our oven to 325 degrees and cover it with a tight fitted lid into the oven. So here's my rule of thumb. For a three pound roast, about three hours. Four pounds, four hours. You get the idea. You want it to be uber tender, shredding apart with two forks. I have one and a half pounds of cremini mushrooms. You want to wipe these little babies. They're dirty. Never submerge them in water. They'll get waterlogged. Half the small ones and quarter the big ones. A little chef -y tip, I share this on my Instagram, for your thyme, so you need several thyme sprigs, probably about eight thyme sprigs. You wanna just pinch the top and pull, just like that. It removes the leaves, super easy. And six cloves, garlic. We have lots of mushrooms, we need to build some flavor. Now we're just gonna mince the garlic. So you want a 12 inch skillet, and you wanna heat it over medium heat. Quarter cup unsalted butter. Two tablespoons avocado oil. You could also use canola oil, and this is just gonna help the butter not to burn. Add your mushrooms. Add the thyme, hear it popping, it does that. Add a little freshly cracked black pepper. Season it with kosher salt. See right now they're a little dry. I'm just gonna add just a splash more oil. You don't wanna add too much. Then they'll get really oily. They're like little sponges. That's why you never wanna submerge them in water when you're cleaning them. It's best to wipe them. Those little sponges just absorb all that great butter and the oil, and that's why they become so flavorful. Now, after a couple minutes, it'll start to release its own natural moisture and they'll get beautiful caramelized and nice and tender. I'm gonna add the garlic. Saute until it's fragrant. Once you smell it, you know it's good to go. It takes about 30 seconds to a minute. It took us about 10 minutes to saute. Let's go check on our roast. The house smells so good. Woo! So 
tender. It's just shredding apart easily. Add the mushrooms around the pot roast. Let's make the gravy. Remove your thyme sprig. Take a handheld blender and then just puree. Fennel and the onions, they're gonna thicken the gravy. Now if you want it a little thicker, you can do a beurre meunier. And all that is, is equal parts butter and flour. We're basically making a reverse roux. So you want one tablespoon all-purpose flour and one tablespoon unsalted butter. So the butter is cold. So what you wanna do is you wanna sort of knead the butter with a fork and form a paste. So this is how we're gonna thicken our gravy at the end. And I need a bigger boat. Right, that's better. So you don't wanna see any flour. You wanna knead it completely into the butter. That's perfect. Medium low heat, add your bourmonier, whisk it until it melts. Simmer it for a couple minutes until it's thickened. Don't break the gravy. If you rapidly boil it, it'll break the butter and split the sauce or split the gravy. Taste your gravy, make sure you have enough salt and pepper. It is so good. It's so flavorful. We, 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 in essence, made a beef broth. That little boost of Worcestershire gave it an extra depth of flavor. I'm gonna add just one more pat of butter at the end just to round it out. You wanna cut the heat, make sure it's cold. Really important, and then you just wanna whisk it until it melts. That's it, we're done. It'll just give it a beautiful gloss. Parse it, because you're fancy. Now we gotta give it a taste. You just need a butter knife. It just shreds apart so easy. This is how pot roast should be. All we need is mashed potatoes. Oh my God. I know, I say this all the time. I know, it's delicious, but it is so delicious. It is so moist, so tender. I love the chuck roast that it's not the bottom round that sort of is elevated out of the liquid. Make sure you get the chuck roast that's sort of flat, stays moist and hydrated in the oven the entire time. That low temperature 325 is gold. Now here's the thing, if you have a four pound roast, you're, you're gonna need to add a little bit more water. Clearly, it's gonna be in there longer. And the mushrooms, that earthy take on the mushrooms. Now, granted, it can be a little brown when you're serving it. That's why you want a little parsley because you're fancy. So good, so good. This is my best roast I ever made. I want more. And there you have it. So what have we learned today? I like to always say, what have we learned? Because in cooking, you always learn. Whether you're a beginner cook, intermediate, or advanced. I've been cooking for 20 years, and I still learn every single day. Last week when I made this pot roast, I deglazed with a red wine, I pinsaged with some tomato paste and added some beef stock. It was way too concentrated. And then I realized, take it right back to how you've always made it, the classic. And that's why I started this series, Cooking the Classics, because the classics always come through. This broth is absolutely delicious. It made a velvety and delicious gravy. And there you have it. The classics always come through. If you like this video, you learned something, give me a thumbs up, comment in the comment box below. Be sure to subscribe. I do roll out a new homemade made easy recipe video each week. And if you wanna check out more of my other videos, click this one or this one. I'll meet you over there.